This is Borders Kitchen. The book is Mario Batali's Italian Grill, and you're going to make something that's decidedly un-Italian for us. How do we get started with this cool chicken dish? This would be a dish inspired by my Italian flavor components, but a dish that you would never see in Italy. And in fact, it's kind of my take on wings. Sweet! That now means we'll all be happy. You can do it with wings, or you can also do it with drumsticks. And okay. I kind of like it with drumsticks. Okay. But that's just because I like more to chew on. So we've taken wings, we just uh, hit them with a little extra virgin olive oil salt, put them in the oven, bake them until they're just cooked through. Okay. That is about 20 minutes. All right. Then we toss them in a bowl. Still warm is ideal. Right. But room temp is fine, and even cold out of the fridge is all right with me too. A lot of people have a lot of weird things going on in their world with chicken. Right. However, however, however your faith tells you to deal with chicken is the way you should always <laughs> deal with chicken. Now we're gonna take some decidedly non-Italian ingredients, although right. they have buttermilk. Right. We're gonna take buttermilk. So we're marinating these after cooking. After cooking, cool. exactly. Then we're gonna take fennel seeds. That the Wonderful. smell of there's that butcher that I love so much in Panzano, Dario Cecchini. Mm. Whenever I squeeze a fennel seed every now and then, it makes me think of him. It makes me think of Italian because it's that sausage seasoning. Exactly. It smells just like <sighs> a nice porchetta. Absolutely. A lot of black pepper. I'm noticing. I'm going to say that's two and a half, three tablespoons, and then a little bit of some chipotle-based hot sauce. So this is a very, very gutsy dish. This is a wingy dish. This is one that you would serve on Monday night calcio. That's a joke because calcio is <laughs> the Italian, Italian game of soccer. And you let those sit in there for as long as you want. I'm going to throw just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil on it. This is a really fired And then fired we are going up. to take them right to the grill. Cool. So we've baked them and then we grill them. So the grilling here is really just for additional flavor basically? Well the grilling is going to give it that smokiness and mm -hmm. what it's going to do is it's going to almost char the ingredients of this marinade right. right onto them. It's going to be a little smoky but not too bad. And, Man, this uh, smells unbelievable already. Right, you can smell that we're in the right place. Yes. And because you've got cooked chicken in here, you can use a little bit of this marinade afterwards as right. a little bit of a drizzle. Nice. It's not going to hurt you. Nice. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some fennel, because this would be the celery component of our buffalo wing. Fabulous. I love the fennel seed in this, and then I love the fennel raw with it. You just... So I'm starting to get this. This is basically buffalo wings, but everything is Italian inspired Everything's in terms Italian of the ingredients. Inspired. Cool. And also, because you do that pre-cook, you can prep this to the grill point right. the day before and never have a problem with That's it. That's fantastic. Now, why don't you take a little bit of this marinade yep. and just baste those wings over there for a sec. Cool. And you could just make a huge mess of these, like if right. you're having people the over more for you the can games get on or there, whatever. The happier you're going to be, although you might not necessarily be singing Italian arias, Maybe a little REM might be singing along with this one. Yeah, exactly. Or red hot chili peppers, maybe. There you go. Now we're talking like that. <laughs> Given these flavors. <laughs> now over here I have. I bet there's a CD over in the music section that they can, yeah, exactly. They can find anything they want in the music department. <laughs> right here at this very store. Okay, cool. So now we're going to take some gorgonzola, which is the king of blue cheeses. This is brilliant, right? We got the blue cheese a dipping bit sauce. Of red wine vinegar. Italian blue cheese. A touch of black pepper, and we're just going to kind of mush, because we don't want it to really become too broken up. Right. I'm looking to make this almost to, not to look like a creamy blue cheese dressing from the cold American part of the grocery store, but kind of a chunky one. Chunky with and... With all the right things, mm. kind of broken, and that's kind of the style of cooking that happens in Italy. They don't have very emulsified things or creamy looking things. Right. But they'll use creamy products. Sure. Like a good gorgonzola. They're just not worried about it being somehow, you know, homogenous. perfectly smooth they and velvety. the homogenous. Give it some texture, some rusticity. All right, so there you have. God, that smells incredible. Right. It's unbelievable. Now, who would have thought to add vinegar to blue cheese, but it's brilliant. Uh, absolutely, makes all the sense. Now, you want to grab those wings. Just pile them right on there. Notice how I got a fine, fancy char there. Are you happy with that? You are the grilling queen. They look so La Regina. nice. Wow. So this is really cool because the other thing about wings a lot of times is that they have to be deep fried, which is a royal paint. Well, it's and really just hard to do at the house. Exactly. So we've got to totally get the whole wing thing going. Lots of great texture, char, crunch on the outside without yeah. having to go with the deep fryer deal. Love and it. as well, this could easily be an entree or just an appetizer. Now, mm. if you're doing it with the drumsticks, mm -hmm. maybe two per person, and that's all you got to go with. 
But with the wingettes, you know, the little drumettes, I like to probably give them three or four per person. I think so. As an app, if I not think more. so. So then you just pile them up, and they're hot. But being born with asbestos fingers. I'm going to show you my really, really pro sommelier skill right here. Okay. Right? Is there anything greater than a twist off white wine? Does it make it just that much closer to another glass? <laughs> nothing, that's my problem. Nothing better. There's very little complication in having, yes, <laughs> that second bottle with dinner. No special tools required. No, but I think what it does is it, it implies that it doesn't have to be a serious experience Absolutely. to have a great bottle of wine. And that's Absolutely. what I love about that whole idea. And so the much. cork isn't what makes the wine quality, it's the wine itself. This one is totally cool. I, I think it's going to really go with this because there's a lot of peppery stuff going on in there. So this is Riesling from California. Ooh. And I think that this is just going to rock. This is one of the most tasted and beloved wines that uh, in is my that wine wine buy guide. No, it looks great. This is from where? California. Wow. Mm. See, that's what Riesling should taste like. Mm. I've had too many blue priestesses or whatever the the value was mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. the time, and that was not good. This is a food wine. Super, super clean. How are we working Yummy. There? This is unbelievably great. Can I dip? That's what you're supposed to do. I, I want to dip into the gorgonzola stuff here, which is going to be... That's going to make that chicken wing. It's going to be the moment. Mmm. Wow. Thank you. This is where finger looking good really came from. There you go. Mmm. Mmm. Grilling. Best Dying. wings ever. Thank you.